Welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at the salmon goose sauce rule. Let's begin first of all by talking about the objectives of the salmon goose sauce rule. The first objective is to predict the location of the internal opening of the fistula. And the second one is to predict the type of the fistulous tract. So in that regards, what then is a fistula? When we say a fistula in ano, specifically, it is an abnormal communication between a primary opening in the anal canal and a secondary opening in the perianal skin lined by granulation tissue. That is what we term as a fistula in eno. And the salmon gusos rule would help us to know the internal opening of the fistula as well as determine the type of the fistula strat. Let's move ahead and talk about the salmon gusos rule. For the salmon gusos rule, what does it state? It states that fistulas with an external opening anterior to an imaginary transverse line drawn across the anal verge will follow a straight radial course to the dented line whereas fistulas with an external opening posterior to the transverse line will follow a curved fistulous tract to the posterior midline that is what the salmon goose sauce rule states but there's an exception to the rule what is that exception the exception to the salmon goose sauce rule is that fistulas with an external opening anterior anterior to the transverse line and at the same time lie greater than three centimeters from the inner verge will follow a curved fistulous tract to the posterior line as we will see in fistulas with external opening posterior to the imaginary transverse line that we spoke about and an example of such fistula we call them the horseshoe fistulas so the horseshoe fistulas as we are seeing they would not obey the rule then the question goes what then are the horseshoe fistulas you should know that horseshoe fistulas will result from a horseshoe abscess and when we are talking about abscess and fistulas you should know that abscess and fistula are phases of the same disease process in such that abscess is the acute phase of that disease process and fistula is the chronic phase of that same disease process so to get a fistula we would have to move from an abscess so in that case when we are talking about horseshoe fistulas we have to make reference to horseshoe abscess for the horseshoe abscess we are looking at a circumferential spread of infection from one side to the other and that could follow a particular pattern and which pattern are we looking at we are talking about it starting from the intersphinteric space giving rise to an intersphinteric abscess then it will spread circumferentially to the ischiretal space giving rise to an ischiretal abscess and finally moving to the supralevator space also known as the pelvic rectal space then giving rise to a complete horseshoe abscess as time progresses it will develop into a horseshoe fistula so in that case look at the demonstration here we are having the intersphinteric space where the infection will start from then it will develop into an abscess and the infection will spread to the ischial rectal space where it will develop into an abscess and it will further spread to the supralevator or pervy rectal space where it will develop into an abscess and if you look at the shape of this it looks like a horseshoe and because it's looking like a horseshoe it is referred to as a horseshoe abscess and it will progress into a horseshoe fistula now let's demonstrate the salmon goose sauce rule so this is our anal verge this is the anal verge that we are talking about 
and this is the imaginary transverse line drawn across it we will take this as the anterior portion and this as the posterior aspect so if you have an external opening here which is located anterior to the imaginary transverse line we are expecting it to take a straight radial course to the dentate line when we say straight radial it means it's going to be inclined at an angle this is a radar it is inclined at an angle it is not uh, vertical it is inclined at an angle so it will take a straight radial course to the dentate line that is if the fistula has its external opening anterior to the transverse line that we are talking about here drawn across the inner verge in reality what is done is that the patient is put in the supine position and an imaginary transverse line is drawn touching the ischial tuberosities it means that the ischial tuberosities will be palpated and an imaginary line is drawn across them touching the two at both sides and that will give us the imaginary transverse line being drawn across the inner verge or the center of the anus so if you have the external opening located anterior to the imaginary transverse line drawn across the inner verge it will take a straight radial course to the dentate line so these fistulas here the external openings are anterior to the imaginary transverse line and they are taking a straight radial course to the dentate line now if you move up this becomes a posterior aspect so if the external opening which is here the external opening which is posterior to the imaginary transverse line drawn across the inner verge as you can see if it is posterior what would it do it will take a curved as you can see it is taking a curved fistulous tract it will follow a curved fistulous tract to the posterior midline why are we saying posterior midline because here it is straight it is not taking any radar course it is taking a curved fistulous tract to the posterior mid line so all fistulas with the external opening located posterior to that imaginary transverse line they will take a curved fistula strut to the posterior midline now to the exception to the exception if you have a fistula with an external opening anterior to the imaginary transverse line but it is lying at a distance greater than three centimeters from the inner verge then that anterior fistula will take a curved fistula strut to the posterior midline meaning that it is not following the rule for the anterior fistulas and that is what we are referring to as the exception then finally to easily remember the salmon goose's rule think of a cat at the anterior aspect of the cat you have the nose and the nose is straight if you go to the posterior aspect of the cat you have the tail and the tail is what curved so if it is anterior it will be straight if it is posterior it will be what curved once again think about a cat with a straight nose where is the straight nose it is located at the front of the cat that's the anterior aspect where is the tail it is at the posterior aspect the back and if you look at the tail it is what curved if you look at the nose it is straight in that case we will say that if a fistula with an external opening is located anterior to that imaginary transverse line then we will think about the nose where is it it is anterior how is it oriented it is straight so it will take a straight radial course to the dentate line if it is posterior then we are looking at the tail the tail of the cat is curved so if you have an external opening of a fistula located posterior to this transverse line then it will take a curved fistulous tract to the posterior midline as does the tail of the cat and finally i have a question that i will expect the answer in the commentary box the question is coming from surgery and that question is why is appendicitis rare at the extreme of ages kindly do well to leave your answer in the commentary session i believe we've achieved a great understanding kindly make sure to subscribe to my channel like share and also recommend to friends my name is dr dell 
and this is concept in medicine bye bye